What's going on guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be going over how to set up a battle belt system. And believe it or not, this is probably the most requested video I've had in the last couple years by far. It's a very simple video as far as how to set something up, but where it becomes complicated is what type of gear you're using and how much you wanna use, what's your area of operation. So this setup, um, this was a belt that I already had set up. I actually broke it down. And the reason being is there's no reason for me to go out and purchase another um, belt system to have laying around the uh, house that's not gonna be put to use, okay? Now, with that being said, there's a lot of different name brands here. I'm not promoting any of them. This is some of the gear that I've found very useful. So the belt is a inner and outer combination. It's a 1.75 inch wide for the battle belt itself. When you're choosing a battle belt, the only things that you really need to concern yourself with, in my opinion, is the thickness, okay? The thinner it is, the less support it's going to have and your gear is going to want to flop a little bit more unless you have it really tight to the body. So the second thing is the rigidity of it, meaning some belts don't put the support band in between the webbings so it's a lot more flexible and keep in mind as the material breaks in over time it'll be really flimsy and that's something you want to try to avoid okay next is going to be your buckle style that you like okay there's a bunch of them out there you just got to figure out what style of buckle you like and just run with it, okay? This Cobra style here is very simple, it's quick, it's durable, um, and I like it. Now here's something to take in consideration. When you order a belt, they'll often ask you, do you wanna spend another you know, 40 to $60 on this D-ring? Now I know it looks good, but here's what I'm gonna tell you. If you think for a second you're gonna just take some random belt off the internet and go repel you've lost your ever-loving mind, okay? Our riggers belts were stitched with paracord, or excuse me, a parachute thread. Super, super supportive, and it was tested over and over with the military to say, if we need to repel out a window or something for emergencies, this belt will hold up. Now, with that being said, at any point you got your belt wet, it can no longer be used for one single repel because it can't be relied on due to the deterioration of the uh, minerals and stuff that actually soaked in. Even if you wash it with fresh water, don't use it. So I would highly recommend that unless it has been tested by the military or OSHA or something like that, don't ever try to use any of these belts for repelling right, or these buckles because a lot of these buckles are not made in America. They're made over China. I don't know about this company, so don't take my word for it on that. And uh, they're very cheap, so you have to be very cautious on a lot of these things, okay? So the inner belt, I believe, is about 1.5 inches. This is by far, up to this point, my favorite belt. It's just very comfortable. I'm a 5'9", right now 170 pounds. I cut up a little bit. It just seems to be overall the best fit for me, as well as just operationally, it feels really good, okay? Now, I will tell you when you're ordering, there is a consideration that when you give them your waist size, a couple of these companies are a, they're not completely accurate as far as the industry is concerned. I always go up two sizes, a little bit you know, larger, one to two sizes. So my waist is a 31, or excuse me, 30 to 31 right now. This is a 32. And this gives me enough real estate to work with. And again, you know, I could potentially cut it off just a little bit. If you go shorter, this webbing is gonna be really short and you may not be able to get your hand on it to tighten it down, okay? For my knife, and this is actually my CQB setup, if I haven't said that yet. This is a very simple out the front blade by Kershaw. It can't be purchased anymore. Safari Land holster. All right, the med pouch is by Rose Tack from Germany. They have a lot of good um, gear as well. The tourniquet is by One Shot, or excuse me, the tourniquet holder is by One Shot. My, 
This is for my rifle. Okay, this is called a rifle catch. If you aren't familiar with these, I'll do a video on them later on. They're very useful. They're designed for CQD or CQB. Um, really good for law enforcement and securing your weapon if you're going to go in and detain somebody. All right. A kangaroo style HSGI AR mag pouch and a HSGI double pistol mag. Okay. Like I said, for me, that's all I really need for everything that I do. If I'm not big on um, dump pouches, okay, reason being is if I'm going to get rid of a magazine, it's either going on the ground because it's empty or there's something mechanical wrong with it and I can get it later, okay, if I survive the gunfight. If I'm running and gunning, everything goes down my shirt and then when I get to a point to recover, then I'll pull everything out and do what's called a reorg, okay. so. It's all about personal preference. I like to be as streamlined as possible. With that being said, let's get started. This video is brought to you by True Shot Gun Club out of Tempe, Arizona. I believe that they are the number two ammo supplier in the US right now. Great company, they have great ammunition, great group of people. I pick up ammo every time I travel to California for our California training program and pretty much on the way home. So if you're looking for ammo, the link is below. You can either order it online or you can actually order and walk in and pick it up if you're in the area. Before we get started, I would advise you to get a small pair of needle nose or just needle nose in general. You don't have to have them, but it's definitely going to help you out. A razor blade with a new blade on it. That's going to be very beneficial or a very sharp knife and some zip ties. Um, so almost every pouch or thing we're going to put on our belt does have a securing method. I have seen these break time and time again. Another concern that I've ran across is the fact that depending on what you're using, it might be too wide for the webbing itself. So you're going to have to do a little modifications and I'll show you that here in just a second. So I usually work with the four and seven inch zip ties. You don't need that many. You're talking no more than four per pouch. Okay, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I secure them. Now, if they, your items do come with securing methods such as this, I actually will use these, but I'll back it up with zip ties. But what you'll see here is this Black Hawk um, item the securing method was way too big for what I wanted, so I actually removed them, okay? Just personal preference, so the HSGI, and then for whatever reason, I took these out. So does it really matter? No. Here's what it comes down to. I personally um, work in a mindset of plan for the worst case scenario. I've had some really bad experiences where we are operating and you just look down and piece of your gears hanging off or it's actually missing on a patrol. So just because these securing methods are really strong and they look great, Murphy's Law, if it can go wrong, it will. And it's not to say you'll ever experience something to that level, but I would highly recommend you just take a little bit of time and secure it. On another note, when you get these into the webbing, you'll see that there's still some play. All right, is it the end of the world? No, but those zip ties are going to ensure that there's no movement at all. If your pouches and stuff move, um, it pretty much means that the entire belt has moved or your zip ties have broke, which the possibility of all four zip ties breaking is very slim, okay? So from my experience, what I would highly recommend you start with is your holster. Okay, obviously I'm left-handed. If you didn't know that, now you do. And as you can see, the crease is already there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and line up my holster. I'm just gonna take it all the way down. And secure it. I will tell you, this is a pain in the butt when you start getting into really fine tuning your gear. All right, 
so it's in the right spot. Now, obviously, you don't have the luxury of knowing exactly where you want it. So what I would do is put your belt on at first, get a rough idea. You could take a marker or a pencil and put a little mark where you feel that you want the center of your holster, and then you can put it on. Now, every time you put a piece of gear on, I highly, highly recommend that you go ahead and put it on and see if that's where you want it exactly. Because what you could run into is you get the entire belt put together thinking it's exactly where you want it and you realize you can't reach it, it's not efficient, and you've just wasted uh, quite a bit of time. Because if you feel one piece needs to shift left or right, but it's blocked by something else, if you have a small waist, well then you definitely are gonna be taking multiple pieces off and resecuring them. So. Make sure, I can't tell you how many times I put my knife on my belt before my holster and screw myself. Okay. So what you'll notice here is because this is wider then the opening of the webbing, what I did was I took my knife, a razor blade, and I cut one section of the webbing. Now some of you may not want to do this, and I can understand you don't want to cut your gear and it looks all gypsified, but again, are you training to be an operator, you know, if something were to happen in this country? or you worried about your looks, okay? Because at the end of the day, um, you can't even tell that I have zip ties on my gear unless I show you or you get up on my belt, okay? So I'm gonna just take some of these zip ties out here. I don't know how many I'm gonna use, but I'm just gonna take a bunch of them out. And then I'm also gonna take a couple of these larger ones because if I'm not mistaken I'll need some of those and I'm gonna put this out of the way so this is where the tedious part and the hard part to explain comes in at okay so you can see you're not gonna be running the same knife or the same holster that I run all right so that's something to take in consideration so what I'm gonna do here is Hopefully. I think that's the hardest part about doing all of this is getting the belt put together. It's very frustrating. I can't tell you. And there, see, that one actually apparently has been cut at some point. And you may even have that happen. Now the question may be, why would I even put a zip tie on there that's going to break anyway? Well, that clearly was a manufacturer's defect. And it's just one of those things that does happen that you can't really prevent sometimes. So you may go out there and train and something breaks. But it just goes to show you why it's important to actually have other securing methods because things do break. Zip ties aren't 100 proof any more than other gear is. So now if you're going to use a razor blade, I'm not trying to push all the way through it. I know this sounds petty, but all I'm doing is putting just a little bit of pressure. You will cut yourself. You will cut into your gear and make a gigantic mess. Okay. So even with two securing methods, you still can see a little bit of movement on the bottom. I personally, don't want that movement. That's how tight I run my gear, okay? So having these other points that I can secure to, I'm gonna make sure 
that it doesn't move anymore. Okay. Again, this is all personal preference when you get down to being nitpicky like this, but like I said, I've been there. I know how horrible the environments can be. And I know Murphy's Law, he is not on your side. On any level, is Murphy's Law on your side. And this is another good benefit of having these little needle noses. If the zip ties were to try and hide on you, you can get to them fairly easy. All right. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and since I'm working on this side, go ahead and take this buckle off one more time. Keep it off. Right. Now what you'll see is that moves only with the belt. Do you have to be that anal? No. But do you want to be at operator level? Well, that's what makes a very efficient operator. All right, so now we've got two things done. <clears throat> Something to take in consideration is when you lay this belt flat and you try to put two pieces side by side like this, oftentimes it may not work because you're trying to bunch them too close together, but you gotta take in consideration this is not how the belt is going to be. So the belt is naturally going to be curved, and if you actually curve the webbing, then the pouches and stuff will more than likely um, be able to work together, okay? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work this other side right here, okay? I can't tell you how many times people call me and say, hey, will you build me a belt, put one together? <laughs> it's uh, such a pain in the rear to do it, to secure it this much. But man, I tell you, when you start getting out there operating, like really, really operating, you understand why we do stuff like this. Like I said, I think I wonder how many comments I'll get of people saying, you don't need to do that. I've never done that. And I've done this and I've done that. And, you know, I can respect that. But at the same time, that doesn't negate all of the things that I've done and experience. And the reality is most people will never experience the, thing that I, the things that I have. So, of course it will more than likely work just fine for you. But that's not what I'm into. I'm not into taking those chances. I want to ensure that when I get into a gunfight, that I'm going to win. We're not here to survive. We're here to win. I think that's a big confusion in our world today. There we go. Goodness gracious. All right, so now that we have that, okay. All right, so we're actually just going to secure the zip tie, all right, to the bottom. So once you get them lined up, they go in pretty smooth. And what I would definitely recommend you do is not, or not do, excuse me, is take them and tighten them down all the way until you get everything into place, okay? That will potentially cause a lot of mess. You may have to even actually cut it and start over. Okay, once you get them both rocking and rolling, then you can tighten them down. If you want to ensure that you prevent all possibilities of mistakes or you know, securing it down too tight. 
more than you need to right off the get-go is why don't you just wait to tighten everything down. think as many times as I built these belts that it would get easier but nothing comes easy guys I would tell you that at the end of this it's going to definitely pay for itself and again this is not like something we're just trying to enjoy this is literally a lifeline so that's why it's important to take these things so serious okay Okay, so we just tighten these down as we did the last couple times. And one of the reasons why I like to use the smaller ones is because the heads don't stick out beyond the belt. Because if those heads stick up here, I can assure you they're going to be very, very, very uncomfortable. If you uh, cut these wrong, you don't cut them even or twist them off, whichever one you prefer, they will cut you open. Very, very, very sharp. All right. So, saw how loose it was before. Now we have it completely secured and it only moves with the fabric. All right. So now we're just going to take this. All right. I'm going to find out exactly where it went. which looks like it went right here to me. Right. So once again, as you can see, if I lay this down flat, it's not wanting to line up. But if I turn it the way it's supposed to be as far as, or curve it, like I'm wearing it, it's going to line up just fine, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to go ahead and push these in. Two for the top. All right. And then we're just going to secure them as such. I know you can't see this right now, but I'm pretty sure you can get the gist of it. I remember one time we were patrolling, we inserted on some training and it from the get go was just a nightmare. And I just bought a brand new knife. I thought, you know what, I was a new guy. I'm not going to secure that, you know, I don't have time. <laughs> as soon as we got off the plane, we inserted right off the get go. Um, it actually ripped off my belt and I lost it and we couldn't go back. It's not like you get to say, hey, I lost some of my gear, so I need to go back and get it. You know, you don't get that luxury, especially, and training is not that big of a deal, you know, outside of losing gear and a good learning lesson. It's going to cost you some money, but in real world, you were to lose something like that you're actually giving your entire insert point directions and everything so they can track you fairly easy like that. So when I say it's not that important in training, there's not a lot of repercussions is what I mean. But here's the reality. As everybody knows, what you do in training is going to carry over into real world. So don't think what I'm saying is it's not important because it is. Because the way you're training, how your gear set up is exactly what you're gonna take into a combat situation. So if it comes off in training, it's definitely gonna come off in a real world situation, okay? Okay, tighten these down where you want them. Looks like I might have to get some more of those small ones out. Like I said, be very careful when you're cutting. 
If you can cut away from you, it's recommended to cut away from you and don't put a lot of pressure into it. It's not hard to cut through these zip ties. All right, so now you can see that it's not going anywhere. This is just the bungees and stuff moving. Okay, so my weapons catch. Once again, guys, if you don't, if you don't know what a weapons catch is and stuff like that, don't go out there and say, ooh, I want that because so-and-so got it, okay? Yeah, they're cool, but once again, if, if it's not something that you are going to truly use in your training, all right, then stay away from it. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time on that stuff. I mean, do what you want. It's your money and your time, but man, you're not hard to hit. So the heavier you are, trust me when I tell you, you are so easy to kill, it's unreal. Now with that being said, that's not me and former SEAL telling a civilian that you're hard to kill. That's me telling you that we are all, or excuse me, easy to kill, we're all easy to kill. Literally, all it takes is couple seconds of preparation while you're on the range and somebody wanted you to dead well, you would be dead I think you could agree with that no matter how good you are you can't focus on everything and everyone at any given point so there's definitely a false sense of security when it comes to being a shooter having all this gear even armor armors great but it doesn't mean it's gonna keep you alive. All right, so. Okay. Nice, it's coming along beautiful. All right, so let's see if I can cut these bigger ones without taking my knuckles off. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, All right. so once again, I'm gonna take my med pouch here and I'm going to work it as such. Now, a lot of times people feel that this gear needs to be perfectly symmetrical. Now obviously, we want it balanced out as much as possible, but here's what's more important is that we can actually, excuse me, we can actually uh, reach the gear that we're trying to work with. And that doesn't always line up. So even my belt buckle, it's never centered, which it's okay at first, it bothered me. But I just realized between my body type and the gear that I needed, it just wasn't, wasn't really possible. There is nothing like finishing these things up so you can look at it and say, wow. That is slick. A lot of times you may have to bend it over like this to actually get into the areas that you want. Just depends. You just gotta be flexible and very patient. Okay, especially if you're just learning this for the first time. What I would recommend if you're doing this for the first time is not to really worry about anything like zip ties go out there and test it out. You know, if you find that the gear isn't really working for you in the manner that you want it to, and it's moving around and all that good stuff, well then maybe, just maybe, you want to uh, do something about it, okay? Because this is uh, very frustrating, and this is one of the reasons why I put it off and I'll be honest with you, 
if you guys are still watching, you're way more patient than I am because I don't feel that I have the patience to sit here and watch somebody put a belt together. But okay, that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, I would highly recommend you put this on. Maybe put your magazines in. Do a couple magazine exchanges, draws just to really see if that's exactly what you want. I can almost guarantee once you get to the range, you're gonna quickly see that there's a little bit of fine tuning to do and it can be frustrating. So I'd say the most important thing to do when you're doing any of this is to be patient with yourself. Give yourself a little mercy and grace. A lot of us are experts. We've been doing this for over a couple decades and it's still frustrating and irritating. And I can guarantee you if I didn't have my belt marked of where this equipment went, I would still be refining it for the next hour, hour and a half. So just be patient with yourself. Like I said, just give yourself mercy and grace. Um, thank you guys for watching the video. So please like, subscribe, share, comment, and as always, have a great day and God bless.